and uh, Kirk Hercules is past the transom. Roger, past the transom. And deck, feathers all the way out. Roger. Did you see it moving around? But see, see how it bobs around? Oh yeah, okay. Not, not much I can do. That board is coming off. Yeah. And back deck, Atalanta is in the water. Roger.
This is an audio slate for dive H1949, 23-19-15. Mark. Are we holding at 50? And they were going to do the... Yeah, uh, at, at 50, when you guys are done, we're going to do a little test. Okay. All right, good afternoon, everyone. We are on our very first dive of the season, and my name is Daniel. I will be your SPL host today. And we are looking at a Hercules right now. It has gone past 50-meter depth, and we are going to be starting our live stream. Our, oh, they, they thought you were doing ROV oh, checks still. Yeah. Oh, okay, so. ROV checks done? No, no, no. Wait, wait. Okay, so, so what we're going to do is we're going to fire the laser for the first time. And it's going to take us a couple of minutes to maybe five minutes to, to get the data we need. And then Roger we'll let you know when we're ready to go down again. Roger that. Um, and so this test now, it's five seconds. Holding for science. Yeah, you can explain it on SPL too. Okay, so it's five seconds, five times, yeah. not five M. Okay. All right, everyone. So today we are going to do our very first expedition, NA-149. And on this expedition, we have a new instrument aboard, our Hercules. This is a Raman spectrometer. So right now, our science team is currently troubleshooting and going through all the steps they need to make sure everything is right up and where it should be. And pretty soon, we'll be continuing our dive and we'll be doing some great science today. So I see we have some people in the chat who are really excited for us. And just keep your questions coming, and we are here to answer them. All right, yeah, I forgot about that.
Do you have to clear it first? Then? And Pablo, feel free to leave your mic on and vocalize as, as you go. Yeah, 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 totally. Those like those side that side camera that worked out well. The Niskin camera worked out well. I no, you can't see the forward one, can you? Yeah, can't see the other one. You can see it here, maybe. You can kind of see it. Like if you were looking, you'd see it when it went. I think, but I had to shift it a bit. You got a lot of room out the back. Yeah. Data. All right, everybody, uh, we've made some history here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Uh, for the first time, we have uh, Raman spectra of water, uh, of course, surprise, surprise, uh, <laughs> taking at a distance from V. So thanks, everybody. And now we can uh, proceed to descent when you guys are ready. Good to go. Good to go. Okay, we're good to go down now, folks. Huge win. So was that? Um, so try to that get was us just to the Raman. Five meters a minute for starters, if her can keep up. Oh. Wow. Nice. Did you do two firings? No, so, so you ended up doing one? Yeah. And that's that what that's there the integration the of 10, that. That's 10 meters okay, per minute. It. So try and get that to 25 for starters. And we'll see how we go. Perfect. Is it the top or the bottom one you go by? No. Yeah. It's picking up though. I might get to 20. That's 18 year old scotch. Um, just try and uh, hold that. Yeah, bring that down to 20 Talk meters about why it's so special. Please. Yeah, all right. Well, you know, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, uh, there is a technique called Raman spectroscopy, and it was invented in 1928 by an uh, Indian scientist called Raman. He won a Nobel Prize uh, in 2029 uh, or 30 um, uh, for explaining how light scatters differently when you shine it the right way uh, on the right sample. and. Uh, over the last almost century, uh, we've been through multiple iterations of his uh, discovery. And it's only until laser was discovered that we were so, able yeah. to do Raman um, uh, at a scientific right, level. Thanks, so between a discovery and an exotic thing now becomes scientific uh, to the 60s, 70s. And the problem is that until 20 years ago, a Raman instrument of quality yeah, was as big as the room we're sitting in here today. We're gonna have to live with it so over We'll come back quickly. Hundreds of millions of dollars and suffering and success. Okay. 
yeah, we're uh, between be uh, between uh, NASA and other agencies, we were able to start shrinking the size of this uh, technology uh, to the point that we have it on Mars today. We have two instruments on Mars that have Raman technique, but we didn't have any in the ocean. Um, uh, there was a test 20 years ago done by Embari, uh, where they, for the first time they did Raman, but they essentially what they did is put a, a commercial system, put it in a box, uh, take it down to a chimney, and did some in-situ uh, uh, Raman spectra with a probe. Um, uh, that proved to be very complex and, and very difficult because uh, it takes time to get Raman spectra. So it turns out to be better if we, uh, if we uh, um, uh, measure at a distance. That way we don't have to get a vehicle close to the system, uh, we don't have to touch the sediment uh, or the chimney, eventually breaking it. So we can just cover more ground faster if you want. So finally we, we did this. This is what we're doing today. And as we speak now, uh, we got the first, the very first Raman spectra taken at four meter distance of the water column uh, that we're shooting with our laser. And of course, uh, to nobody's surprise, uh, we're seeing water in our spectra. But this is good news because that tells us that our system is very aligned and it's perfectly working um, as it should. Yeah. We also see in sulfate, of course, no surprise, but that tells us the sensitivity of the system, right? We are even to see the, 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 the low amount of sulfate that we have in water. And finally, uh, as we are in the top layer still, as I'm speaking and we're at 120 meters uh, depth, we are seeing organic matter there. And this is particle organics plus a dissolved organic matter. Uh, we'll do uh, evaluation of where the peaks are, especially after we finish this, and we'll be able to tell where the pigments are. I can tell more or less by the fluorescence that, that we see that uh, this could be some, some type of carotene. Uh, this is a pigment that life uses to protect from the sunlight, so no surprise either. But as we go down, we should see this peak decrease uh, and perhaps uh, the total amount of organics uh, decrease as we go. So uh, this is a first, I think, for, for a new type of uh, oceanography oceanographic investigations, uh, I would say, where we can actually uh, see much faster and much more sensitively than we could before with a remote sensing tool that now we can uh, uh, bring down to the to the seafloor. Uh, we're going now at 150 meters. We keep collecting data in this descent. So we're doing essentially a chemical uh, profile of uh, dissolved organics and particle organics as we're going down. And, uh, and Kevin here, he's with me, is telling telling me that we're seeing the laser beam uh, in our camera there. So, uh, so, so just confirmation that we're getting uh, everything was working as expected. Here it is another data point, and we're seeing shifts and, and changes in the spectrum, as expected. Uh, uh, most likely, more likely than not, the organic particles as we descend are gonna uh, be fewer. So we'll see a change in the peaks here, which should stay constant, I believe. It's sulfate levels and, of course, water levels. So we'll use that as an internal calibration to be able to, to tell the abundance of other things that we find in the, in the spectra. So uh, first time, uh, huge su success. Uh, uh, team, if you're listening here, uh, be happy. Uh, you guys did this. Uh, and to the world, yeah, hey, we're now uh, showing a new way of measuring um, uh, the ocean. So uh, can't wait to touch the bottom and see what we can see there. Very exciting. <laughs> this is, no one's seeing how huge this is to Pablo, but this has been, Kevin, you were saying this idea first came about like nine years ago, right, Pablo? And then you've been working on this for four to five years. Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. can try it, but be careful. First words from the engineer who made this possible. Everything is nominal. You see, that's what you want to hear from the chief engineer, that everything is nominal. Yeah. <laughs> engineer answer. It's a very good engineering yeah. uh, thing to it say. Has to go through, like, the um, Pablo, just a quick question. So our, I saw that test three as well, descending, record every 10 minutes. Is that, that's just happening automatically right now? Okay, so I don't need to have a timer on for you or anything. Kevin, Kevin Matically happening, okay, great. And then what, what's the difference between that and the continuous readings that are happening, uh, like that, that we're seeing there? Oh, wow. Oh. oh. OK, well, so we're seeing new things now. Uh, so, 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 we, so we're looking at the images here. Um, and uh, what we're seeing is the green laser, right? That's our laser. We're also seeing a blue 
shift of the laser. And what that's telling us is that uh, there, there is nice. some, uh, some perhaps these particles, these organic particles that you can see in the screen as the ROV is going down, those are uh, reflecting on the blue, uh, fluorescent on the blue. So we can use that color change now from green to blue uh, to tell what the chemistry of these uh, particles are. So uh, very, very exciting uh, news as well that we can use our own camera to also monitor the, the laser uh, as it's shooting. Uh, we weren't sure about this because for protection, uh, we, uh, we negated uh, the green color into our camera uh, so as we didn't and shine back too much laser into it. And, uh, and now we can see uh, a little bit of the green, uh, which is okay, uh, but a lot of the blue. Uh, and I think that's, that's another uh, sign that uh, everything is still hyper-aligned. Uh, we're now at 230 meters uh, depth, and yeah, everything is still working. And we're recording spectra as we go, uh, every 10 minutes, I believe, which, you know, uh, mm -hmm. we'll do the math then, it's probably every 100 meters, something like that, uh, or every 50 meters. Uh, and I think we can Video, ho can we hopefully get the, the first data of, the of that profile of, uh, of uh, organic function. matter as Thank we're you. going down. So we're now in test number three, and so far, successful. Okay. Uh, I'll stop the winch, Sarah. Was that, Kevin, when we saw the yep. blue laser, down was that go down. Uh, a reading, then one of the like every 10 minute readings? Uh, no, I'm oh, doing right now every 50 meters to... Oh, you're doing every 50 in the top, and then okay. switch to every 10 minutes or so once we get a little more in depth. Got it. Okay, I will record that. Kevin has a plan, as you as you heard. Uh, gotta trust your engineer. <laughs> yeah. Where did you say you were planning okay. to switch, uh, Kevin? I can hear you too, so it's okay. All right, let me know when you do. DVL, just for, just for fun. Yeah, wow. Uh. Nice. Can we put it in the box? No. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. that's so cool. Yeah. Would it could be patched in. Yeah, uh, we can see if it's possible no. for a future dive. We've patched other stuff yeah. in before. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do it next time, yeah. It's still yeah. on by one time, uh, I believe. Yeah, yeah. I want to send a picture live to, to, to Justin and Kirby, who are uh, oh, man, it doesn't look very, very really excited. Nailed it, yeah, perfect. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely the arms changing. Huh? Yeah. That? Yeah, if you're happy with it, yeah. Mm. Yeah, nice. <laughs> right on time. <laughs> So once we got through it's the... So Honestly, so unusual that you put something on an ROV for the first time ever and it's just working. <laughs> Well, well uh, I will say uh, it's not that amazing if you if you if you know the rec <laughs> track record much? track record of APL right uh, and <laughs> how they how they 
only deliver when it's ready. In fact, I wanted this five years ago, but they told me, no, 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 no. We need, <laughs> we need to, we need to really, really figure it out. No, I'm kidding. I think, I think it's one of the things that we learned from space. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the one thing you don't want to cut corners in is in testing. Because yeah. once you're on Mars, right, or on the moon or in space, uh, there's no fixing anything. Right, no room for error uh, there. Very really similar here, right? Once you're in the water, uh, mm -hmm. it's a whole project to just uh, bring it up again and, and unseal and, and fix things. Mm -hmm. So the one thing that we didn't want to compromise on testing, and we never signed up for a cruise until we were absolutely uh, sure yeah, let's, that let's uh, everything that is under our control right. uh, would work as right. expected. Uh, the rest, you know, there's always, you know, ground faults, buoyancy issues, as we've seen this morning, but, uh, oh no, but that's when it comes to the optical uh, oh yeah, electronic system. That's down. So uh, we, we didn't expect less than this, but yeah. it's yeah. always yeah. very, very yeah. satisfying of and course. exciting to, yeah, to see good. this thing, you know, working. <laughs> all on the, the planning was worth it. All the planning, all the, exactly, all the work all we the did testing. was exactly uh, done right. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Thanks for taking so good notes. Yeah, yeah. sure. And it was ten, 10 minutes, right? Not 10 seconds? Or is it 10 seconds? 10 minutes. OK. Yeah. So yeah, that was great stuff coming out of our science and engineering team. I thought all the work that we do down here in the ocean is critical for us understanding space as well. Uh, we use Earth as a testing ground for many new technologies that will help us understand worlds like, uh, I believe, the ocean worlds of Europa and Enceladus out in the solar system. And we use Raman spectrometry to understand what if these things are made of from a distance. So, to test them, we use test beds like the bottom of the ocean. So, we go down there and we're looking for many different minerals that are critical for geologists to understand. And we need special instruments to do them remotely. And oftentimes, if we d can do this in on site, sometimes called in situ, then that means that we don't have to send people there to go investigate or take an entire laboratory. We can shrink it down into the size of a rover, and this can be very advantageous because we don't have to run the risk of killing a person if we send it down there. So <laughs> this is very important that we, uh, we have engineers aboard who are also pioneers in their technological fields because this is really pushing the boundaries of what science and engineering is doing today and out in space. How are preliminarily, or, or how has it been going with the dive bot on, uh, or not a dive bot, I guess, the laser bot on, on Perseverance? That'll so do far. for now. So uh, Sarah, for those of you who follow uh, Mars exploration, uh, there is a, um, there. a robot, okay. but there's two of them now working as Curiosity. It's been there for 12 years almost. The new one uh, has been there for two and a half years, uh, two years, something. Uh, it's called uh, Perseverance. Uh, Perseverance has an instrument called SuperCam. And SuperCam is uh, the most sophisticated laser system we have ever flown to other planet. And uh, I was lucky to be part of the team that uh, developed that and operates it now. And one thing that I learned from that is that, you know, now we are at a, at a level in technology, miniaturization, and sophistication of cameras that we can start combining uh, techniques into one single optical train. What that means is that what before we had to have a box for each single method of measuring, uh, Raman, fluorescence, lips, imaging, uh, now we can put it in the same box. Uh, so we cut the volume, the mass by four times at least, and uh, that's enabling us now to, to really look at Mars in a, in, a, in a much different way. So you can see our, our, our instrument here, uh, the laser dive bot, um, as a reincarnation, if you want, of SuperCam, in the sense that it combines uh, together uh, three different ways to look at uh, things. Uh, the first one is Raman, of which I just talked about a little bit ago. Second one is fluorescence. Uh, this is another uh, way uh, that matter interacts with light. And the third one is uh, luminescence, uh, which is also has to do with how photons strike and come back to you after they interact with, uh, with matter liquid, solid gases, uh, whatnot. So um, so I think there's the parallels here are, are very interesting in that we we were able to put this instrument on Mars two years before we were able to put it in the ocean. And I think that tells the story about uh, how hard it is to build things to, to work sub-sea. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're very good at building things for vacuum, 
you know, we've been on the moon, been on l all of the planets almost in the solar system, and, and we can really build for vacuum systems when, you know, there's nothing against us pushing us. We can contain our spacecraft uh, and instruments very well there. Now, the deep sea is the opposite, right? So the deeper you go, the more pressure you have. And building things to sustain pressure is one thing that we haven't nailed <laughs> yet uh, uh, as humans. We're working on it, of course, obviously using Alvin, uh, bringing humans down to the bottom of the ocean. There is countless uh, organizations the, around the world that are uh, diving uh, boats like we are today. But the fact that we now, uh, only now, right, 2023, uh, have been able to, to bring down a, a powerful uh, remote sensing technique using laser like we are to the, to the deep sea, uh, it really talks about the challenges here. So, uh, so you know, that's one of the reasons why we know more uh, about how the surface of the moon and Mars actually look like and some of the compositions as well. We know more about those than we know about our own oceans. And this is, again, uh, a problem of technology and challenges of building things that can sustain pressure and salty water, which is really, really bad for metals, as any of you who has been in the water know already. So I think, uh, you know, uh, now we have, we're equal, right, uh, when it comes to Mars. So we have the same tools, more or less, on, on Mars seafloor. And I think now it's uh, going to start a really interesting cycle of feedback from the way we explore in the deep sea and how can we bring some of these learnings up to Mars. Uh, and the big difference being uh, here we are in mission control, uh, control van, as, as the, the locals call it. Uh, and we are teleoperating uh, this robot and all the instruments, uh, you know, essentially in real time. There is no latency uh, because we are very close. Uh, uh, I think there's like 5,000 meters of cable. Uh, so the light goes in real time, right? So you move the joystick, you push shoot, and things happen in real time. When you're on Mars, uh, you have about 10, eight, maybe 10 minutes delay uh, between the time you shoot the command until it's received on Mars. Uh, uh, and that's if you're lucky and you're in line of sight. More often than not, you're not, and you have to use relay orbiters, uh, satellites on Mars, that can re re collect your, uh, receive your instructions, and then pass it down into the rover, uh, which is down in the surface. Which just means that we only have two windows every day, more or less, to talk to Mars. So uh, on the morning, we send a command, and we uh, push, put it down to the rover. The rover does its thing during the day. By night, before going to sleep, uh, sends the command back, uh, hey, I'm okay, I'm healthy, and this is what I learned today. What am I doing tomorrow? And like that, every single day. So the pace at which we explore uh, Mars is much slower uh, than the pace that we can now explore the ocean uh, because of this latency problem, right? So I think we want to catch up pretty quickly with uh, with how, how much we will we will know our own ocean uh, if uh, we can keep developing these technologies and making them more automatic. Uh, you know, taking Kevin here and myself out of the equation so that things can be done uh, on the fly as things go. Um, but we see this really first uh, deployment, this first dive, and the ones that will carry on in the next uh, few weeks as a way to learn about uh, how to improve, how to bring more autonomy, more intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence into the system, and eventually uh, you know, start uh, really exporting uh, in ways that we haven't done before. Uh, and as I said before, translating those, uh, transferring those to how we explore Mars uh, in the next missions. So this is really, really a success, not just for the ocean community, but I think for the planetary sciences as well, uh, because we are unlocking new ways to to really explore uh, uh, you know, our world around us. Uh, in this case, the underwater uh, world. Less organics. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, we, we, we're not seeing uh, uh, qualitatively and quantitatively uh, with the data that we're seeing and the laser beam that we can observe in the camera. It's how we're seeing much less uh, of a glow of the laser in the water 
uh, because there is much less uh, uh, life, much less organic matter uh, uh, now at 400 meters uh, under. So uh, things, you know, physics still, ta still stand. Uh, uh, we're not discovering nothing, anything new, but we are again, uh, you know, verifying the things that we knew now with a new instrument, which I think this is very, very uh, exciting part of the of our uh, process here is that, you know, of, as we want to explore and see new things, uh, we also want to verify <laughs> that the things that we knew are still correct, so we can use this information to benchmark and to baseline our our instrument. Um, so everything is consistent so far with what we know. Uh, Kevin tells me that everything is nominal still, uh, which you know uh, I can see in his smile and everybody around us. Uh, so yeah, we keep uh, coming down. So we're at 440 meters uh, now. I think we have another hour plus to until we reach bottom. I think we're gonna. Uh, Touch down at 1,200 meters, more or less, today. Uh, uh, our instrument is only qualified, uh, meaning we're only going to bring it down to a maximum of 1,500 uh, meters, almost a mile uh, down. Um, so today is, of course, you know, I want to play safe. and, and They moved the hair. Yeah. Won't, the motor, don't, don't do that anymore. Okay. Nice. To prove that, uh, we're going to do two things. Of course, we're going to shoot at the rocks that are there. But before that, uh, to fine tune, to, to really optimize the measurement uh, procedure, we're going to use uh, and measure samples that we know uh, what they are. Uh, so we're bringing samples from the surface, from the lab. We know, we know what we... Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm waiting to talk to we, everybody. Else. We know what they, what they should look like, and, uh, and we're going to shoot at those first. So what you will see... Is uh, remember Bob Ross or any painter that you know? Uh, you have a big palette with a few circles and things there. We have the same thing. So we'll put them down and, and we'll uh, zoom out and, and shoot the laser um, uh, you know, to verify the measurements. And uh, once we do that, and we're happy with uh, all the you know, laser energy, the, all the camera uh, parameters, and essentially the signal. Uh, when we're happy that we get what we want, what we know it should, should be, then we'll be ready to explore fresh uh, and new samples. And we can really analyze uh, anything. Uh, we're looking forward to analyzing rocks, of course, looking for uh, geochemistry and different minerals that may happen in this uh, system, along with any uh, biomass uh, or different organic uh, pigments that may happen there to give us a clue of the biodiversity uh, in this system. So um, that's what's gonna happen in 15 minutes, uh, give or take. Um, Hannaford. I was just wondering what the DC ground fault on Herc is. If that's Someone something I should know. Uh, I can barely hear. Who, who's that? It's Leela. Can you not hear me? Leela. Hi. Hi. Hi, buddy. It's the arm. The um, arm. Okay. But it's okay. We'll, okay. we'll live with it. All right. Sounds good. And it's holding the plate down, too. So otherwise, I would turn it off. But. So, as you can see, our live broadcast is 24 hours, 365. Well, not entirely around year-round, but we do broadcast 24 hours throughout the world. So whenever we have a dive going on, you can tune in, and it's all for free. And we are also available currently for any questions for those of you who have just tuned in. And welcome aboard the exploration vessel Nautilus. And we are currently on our voyage of NA-149, and we are in the Central Pacific Ocean, down by the King Marief and Palmyra Atolls. This is an area of ocean called the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument. And this is an area of water protected by U.S. Uh, uh, government. This is under NOAA Fisheries, in cooperation with various partners, agencies that coordinate to help manage the area. And this is an area of ocean that has roughly 400 
89,000 square miles. That is massive. And yet, when we look at it on a map, it's actually a very, very tiny section of the ocean. And this includes not only uh, Palmyra and Kingman Reef, we include Baker, Howland, and Jarvis Islands, as well as Johnson and Wake Islands. And it's known for 165 known sea mounts that are hot spots of species and that are in abundance and diversity. It's one of the most pristine tropical marine environments in the world and vulnerable to the impacts of climate change and ocean acidification. Corals and coral reefs are found around the islands and atolls in the Pacific Island region, which consists of the Hawaiian Islands, the Marianas Islands, the eastern portion of the Samoan Islands, and several islands and atolls in the Central Pacific, collectively referred to as the Pacific Remote okay. Island area. What's the, what's the weather? I haven't been catching all these, but we're about to do a thousand, Kevin. Working. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep, so we're getting close to our targeted depth, and our ROM spectrometer is fired up to look at new things under the ocean. Yeah, Daniel, we are, yeah, 1,000 meters and, and counting, and we are, as we speak, we're now collecting another uh, data point. We still see the laser where it should be, uh, and the data is telling us exactly what it should tell us. So uh, I think we're now what, on, on, on data point number 20, more or less, and everything's still looking nominal and, and beautiful. So yay, science. Yay. Yep, so we actually day. had a question about the uh, laser, how powerful is it? So the laser, it's, um, uh, it's about uh, 20 watt uh, laser. So, you know, it, it is powerful in that, you know, it enables us to do the science, but it's not powerful enough to, to do any, any damage to, to any, uh, to any uh, living uh, organism there. In fact, uh, uh, you know, sometimes by accident, uh, or to try, because it's fun, uh, we wave the hand in front of the laser and nobody uh, in <laughs> our lab has ever been uh, affected or failed anything with a laser. So, uh, Who'd you make go first for that <laughs> test? Well, of course, you know, your interns. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. The, the PI is the first one to show that. So, uh, <laughs> so you know, we, we do, we do, you know, not to trivialize laser, we do take pre precautions. Uh, our eyes is the most precious thing we have in the lab, right? So we do always use uh, eye safety. Uh, just because, you know, uh, reflections and, and unlucky laser beam can hit in your eye, and it's happened before in, in other labs, and, you know, people get hurt. So I we always keep it covered. Uh, skin is, is perfectly okay. So, so yeah, I think, I think it's 20 watt average power of the laser. So uh, it's not like the, a laser that people can use on a classroom to go through slides and, and, and point things in the screen. So uh, only that we focus it in a very special way, uh, in a very uh, tight uh, spot, so that we can uh, uh, excite the, the matter in a way that gives us signals so that we can do our scientific investigations. Great answer, I love that. I'm curious what, this, what the top of this geo is gonna look like. Yeah. part of the fun part. You never know what you're going to come down on to. Yeah. You can and, guess, and, but and in fact, you know, part of one of the things that we always uh, claim with this technology is that it is an exploration tool, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, right now what we're doing uh, is we're verifying that, you know, we're seeing what we know, which is water column, right, and organics. Mm -hmm. I think the, you know, the surprises will happen when, when we start shooting uh, at things right. in, the, in the bottom. And, you know, of course, you know, we're not going to discover any new mineral uh, <laughs> or any new uh, element. Uh, uh, we know these are volcanic systems, so we know more or less what the geochemistry uh, needs to be. Uh, we know where the uh, organisms uh, might uh, be like there. But uh, what we're going to see is we're going to perhaps see different distributions, uh, things that it will take us perhaps 
10 dives and mm -hmm. tons of rocks yeah, and sure. samples to bring up uh, topside and then ship to the lab to study. Now we can do this in minutes, if not hours, right, with this technology. So I think that's the that's the exponential, I think, uh, uh, acceleration of the of the speed of uh, of, uh, of knowledge and science that we're going to discover here. So this is the exciting part for us: is to to really help uh, uh, scientists to explore Atlantis faster and better. Screen, at some point, you'll see your. Uh, Will you well, it's immediately on, it's on that one as well. be able your to pick Altimeter out peaks start giving you reasonable uh, numbers. when we're on the bottom and hypothesize what might be in? Uh, yeah, what the geochemistry might be of, of the uh, substrate? Yes, so uh, we have two tools for that. Uh, we have uh, trained uh, our our own AI uh, here. Uh, it's not a chat uh, AI, but it's a science AI. <laughs> and uh, we have trained the AI with uh, an array yet. of minerals that we expect to find here. Okay. So the, the, the AI can uh, tell us uh, with <laughs> quite a bit of confidence uh, I, the last what meters, is the percentage of each mineral that we're going to see there. In case the AI doesn't work very well, uh, I have claimed to fame to uh, to have been doing Raman uh, for about <laughs> 20 years. I've seen all the rocks that we one can see and most of the organics that we can see as well. So I I may uh, I may take take a little bit of a risk and live on camera uh, start <laughs> making uh, identifications uh, on the fly. Uh, luckily, our chief scientist here, uh, Adam uh, Sul, uh, he can correct me. Hopefully, he's <laughs> 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 listening to me because he's a geochemist here. Uh, but I think I think we have a pretty good understanding of what, what we can see in real time uh, life. So well, that'll uh, be yeah, exciting. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. So real maybe intelligence. We'll slow down, uh, Sarah, real maybe intelligence. Five <laughs> meters a minute, or a hundred meters off the bottom. So close. Yeah. Uh, I think it'll be a little bit beyond, yeah, some somewhere close to there. A little bit deeper. I think, uh, Sarah, I'll get you to bring Argus to 30 meters. So and then I'll one stop. of the things that we're seeing uh, and then I'll, I'll on top of uh, under, like again, the sulfate we operate, organics and we'll just go down water the last is that it's a, it's a phenomenon that we knew uh, is that the Raman peaks uh, tend to shrink. Uh, yeah, I'll or stop at 30. It's getting, getting skinnier um, uh, as temperature drops. So uh, when we did the first measurement, uh, at about 50 meters, uh, the water was probably around 15 to 20 degrees Celsius, and now we're getting pretty deep, right? So the water is probably around four uh, or five degrees Celsius. Uh, we're seeing already here, uh, looking at the at the data, is how the Raman peaks are sharper uh, as we're going down, which is another uh, verification that you know uh, the Raman effect physics uh, <laughs> uh, with the instrument we built uh, still stand. Um, and we now can, in fact, use uh, the instrument as a temperature gauge because uh, we can uh, look at the at this width, at the the spread of the peaks, and with a table uh, uh, correlate that with uh, temperature. So uh, it's another extra uh, uh, bonus science that we can do here, especially if we were to find an active uh, hydrothermal vent a chimney, uh, which is typically uh, jetting uh, fluids at about. 200 degrees Celsius, uh, 300, uh, uh, something like that. Uh, if we flew over and, and we stationed the ROV uh, with our laser shooting at the vent, we can calculate the temperature of the of the fluid at distance. So uh, no more needed to get close to it and risk uh, destroying the vent. Now we can do that remotely as well uh, with the system. So it's another of these uh, bonus science that we like to always uh, unveil as we <laughs> as we're doing things. This one we knew. I'm sure over the next few weeks we'll discover new things that we even knew we could do, and I think that's part of the, of the exciting part of testing new technologies that we're up for surprises. Uh, uh, this morning we had, uh, you know, one of the bad surprises, you know, where, where things weren't working the way uh, the ROV team wanted, and we came out of water a couple times. Uh, but I'm expecting a lot of the good surprises uh, coming up uh, in this dive, and, and of course uh, in the future ones. So, yeah, very very exciting. Uh, as we're closing in into 1200 uh, uh, pretty soon, and I think the 
the target depth, uh, as I see in the monitor here, is 1,200, so 1,240 meters. That seems to be uh, more or less where we're going to okay. end up being. And uh, we should be there. Uh, we're slowing down now. Uh, this Keep an eye on the wind. To, to play safe. You know, and I think in about 10 minutes, uh, 15 minutes, rough. we should be uh, like. touching down. So stay tuned. That's pretty cool about the hydrothermal vent application. Would the laser need to be oriented then, though, differently so that you're not, you know, taking the ROV like or the, the, the dive bot right on top of? Well, I could see how we can do a nice uh, drift. <laughs> with yeah, right. As yeah, <laughs> if we just skid out <laughs> sideways with yeah. the ROV. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, uh, so in fact, uh, you know, the, the origins of this project uh, uh, were to study uh, vents exclusively. So <laughs> the, the project right. was funded and was built to look at vents. And what we wanted to do is to, um, to bring this instrument uh, into the regional cable array uh, that belongs to the uh, to the OI, the Ocean Observation Initiative, uh, which has cables and boxes uh, in the bottom of the of the ocean, and uh, Just all stuff. Those, those cables, those cables, yeah. uh, good enough. Oh, probably a siphonophore or something. I didn't see it in yeah. this camera, but looked like one. Yeah, there are there are and then, there um, are creatures that we're seeing here as we're getting closer to the bottom. So sorry, you can so block your auto heading on the there. Story, but, uh, but there are, there are these cables around the U.S. and one of them is off the coast of Oregon. And uh, Argus screen. And the idea was to to, to use this <laughs> system <laughs> into a lander, uh, which is a structure on. that stays stationary on the bottom, pointing at a vent, and over the course uh, of a no year, no your thrusters take measurements of this vent okay. daily no, they are. and okay. analyze how the uh, how the chemistry changes over time, how the minerals change over time, more importantly, how life. Uh, colonizes and, and shifts and, and creates diversity around the vent uh, over the course of a year. So for that reason, we we knew that, of course, you know, the temperature uh, capability was one of the important things to do here to see monitor the change in the fluid temperature. Uh, but uh, the opportunity arose to to join Nautilus and, and the OET, and funded by by NOAA's uh, Ocean Exploration uh, Cooperative Institute, uh, we were able to to take it a step further, which is now uh, bring this instrument to a vehicle, to an ROV, so we can do mobility uh, uh, science, meaning that we're not going to be static looking at one thing, uh, we're going to be mobile looking at many things. So it's a whole different mission, but it's a mission, of course, you know, where we can leverage some of the, some of the uh, uh, technologies uh, and the measurement capabilities uh, to enhance our knowledge of this area, again, that is uh, unexplored yet. So it's really almost like a like a gift uh, if you want to be able to do this in a, on a vehicle uh, as opposed to a, to a lander. But of course, we'll, 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 we'll complete our mission and next year, uh, hopefully, we will bring this to its original intended uh, mission, uh, which is again uh, the Juan de Fuca uh, area uh, of the coast of Oregon. And we'll hopefully leave this there uh, for over a year. And uh, you will also be able to see the data. Are you seeing the laser still, Kevin? Also be able to see the data. Uh, 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 as we as we do that over the years, so uh, I'm going to tune on tune out for a little bit now meter? as we get closer and that come back to you when we have a, a plan to do the science on there. Oh, there it is. Okay, so now we see, and now it's green. Okay, bottom. You can see it in the Raman cam. Um, you can see it in your camera. So altitude here, we have 21 meters now. So. We're going to be logging on bottom in a second. You can see it now there. So on bottom, there's the bottom. And as we get close, so this is where I'll start taking other images. Okay, so I'm gonna drive out in front of you a bit. You'll see Herc in the camera, and then we'll come down a few more meters. Are you trying trying ten meters first? Okay. Let's test test three check. Yep. Okay, so come on down easy, Sarah. Let's get us a bit closer. Yep. Um. If you want to let them know in the front, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so so we're back. <laughs> so uh, we're about ten meters altitude. Uh, 
from the bottom, and if you're looking at the screen, you can see uh, a lot of sediment there, uh, but a lot of bare rock. So now what we're doing is we're uh, taking this opportunity to shoot at this area uh, from our 10 meter vantage point, uh, and we change the parameters of the laser so that we can look at 10 meters. Uh, and we're just waiting to perhaps see the very first spectra of the bottom. Uh, uh, the ROV is moving a little bit, uh, so I expect the data to be a little noisy. Uh, we also don't know what we're looking at. Uh, looks like sediment, uh, and some perhaps silicates there, uh, but we'll, we'll we'll see what we can see. Okay, so we got the data. Okay, so uh, uh, for all we can it's see, coming a little quicker. We and this is from the 10 meter reading. This from the 10 meters reading. Uh, we're getting our first 10 meter reading um, uh, spectra uh, right, of the seafloor. So this is another first for this uh, finale. Is the very first seafloor measurement uh, taken? Uh, and what I see here. It's a little change uh, compared to the water. We still see water peak, and we will always see water peak um, mm -hmm. because we're always going to be seeing um, uh, the 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 Raman, Raman signal coming from the whole water column uh, as we're focusing on the listen on the spot that we want to focus. Uh, right now we're seeing 20 meters of water, right? So 10 meters each way, 10 meters into the sample, into the bottom, and 10 mm -hmm. meters back to us. And we're also seeing uh, a little just bit of organic second, matter as well. Uh, now up. the organic Let's matter can come from two ways now. Five more meters. It could be it could be in the water column, or it could be uh, in the sediment. Uh, so that's one thing that we don't know yet. Uh, this was a kind of like a like a wild card shot, uh, and uh, we're also far away. Uh, we know that our optimal optimal distance is about three meters, four meters. Uh, we're double that, uh, ten meters, and uh, but still get signal, which is pretty impressive. That means that. The alignment of the instrument, you know, after all the shock of going in the water, all the temperature changes, uh, the alignment is being preserved. That'll do. Perfectly. I'll stop so, on the winch. Uh, so it's pretty, pretty spectacular here. Perfect. Okay, and then you want to go into bottom lock, right? All right, so if you guys are still tuning in, you can see here our so first yeah, you image guys of the C4 on this expedition. That. In our first feed, we can see that. It is Hercules looking at the bottom of C4. And our second feet, we could see our other rover Argus looking down at Hercules. No autos. So on. we got two different perspectives here to see what's going on with our science. And so I'm, I'm going to answer some questions from the chat. So what do we expect to find on the C4? Um. So that's a great question. On this nice. expedition, we have some science goals. We are looking, in terms of geology, looking for something called ferromanganese crusts. And this is a type of crust yeah. that is formed from the water column. We uh, have a precipitation like of minerals like iron and manganese that form a coating around hard rocks on the ocean floor. And this is something of investigation for us because we have initiative to help map these minerals across the ocean. They are actually key minerals for many technologies that we use today. And it's important for us to ca categorize and understand where they are for any potential uh, mining. However, that doesn't mean that there is expected mining in these areas, only that we are just trying to understand where these minerals are. And so, what else do we expect to find yeah. on the ocean floor? We expect to find other aquatic life, such as right, corals good. and Made it. starfish <laughs> and other jellyfish sorts. So, we have many scientists on our team who are investigating certain species then they're trying to establish a sort of baseline of knowledge of uh, video. exactly how we Are can compare like these white deep balance? sea corals okay, to set up here. Uh, shallower yes, sea good. corals. So that is kind of what we're expecting to find down here. One moment, Daniel. Um, are you firing right now too, Kevin? No. Okay. Oh, that's not good. And are we currently waiting to do the three meter check? Is that what you're hoping for? Or are you still going? Very slow. If it's possible. Can you write that in the book that we need to uh, speed up the uh, pan and tilt hydraulics? What was that? Uh, I'm here and that's Pablo, yeah. To the pilot, so unmute yourself. They're probably still finishing up their yep. checks, but I think they're getting close. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If you want to talk just to them, you can briefly do that. Okay. And that's so. Uh, but right now th they can hear you. Yeah. Only. 
Okay, so doing a four meter reading. Okay, go ahead and zoom in there. And everyone, you can see the laser underneath Hercules and Argus cam right now, which is kind of a cool, cool view. Yeah. Yeah, you see this white spot right under the ROV? Uh, that's our laser, uh, as we're measuring now. We're shooting on on a mix of exposed rock and sediment. Um, right, and so we are at four meters. Balance first, so image will go dark. Roger. Yeah. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, like. exactly. If they could see that camera view, agreed. Right. Yeah. Is happy. Thank you. Good. Yeah. And um, uh, data. Sarah, this is not a new gauges now that we're problem on the for data have to pipe in an external computer, so they they can figure that out for sure. So I think they're finishing white yeah. balancing and stuff, but we'll yeah. let us know front row when you're uh, done with checks and, and white balances and Just such. Just about. Yep. Oh yeah, I, I have... Uh, okay. Do, do we want the scaling lasers on? Lasers on? Yeah, yeah, separate. We're just, if we want them on or not. It's, it, it's irrelevant, right? Okay. They can be, they can be on, sure. On. All right, welcome back, everybody. So we have some more questions from the chat. Are you using Argus or Atalanta? We are using Argus on this expedition. Atalanta. And yeah. Uh, we're using Atalanta. Atalanta. Oh, we actually I are using Atalanta. Argus on accident. That's my fault. Huh, that's okay. Yeah, I'm just looking on the monitor screen. It says Argus. I wasn't sure which one's which. It's Atalanta, yep. Okay. So we are using Atalanta right now, and Argus is back up on the ship, and we have her stored. Well, currently, we're using Atalanta for our purposes. And we can see here on the live feed, we have Atalanta looking at Hercules. And we are doing some instrument checks before we get on away with more science. Just finishing up a couple of checks here, folks, and we'll be ready to go. Thank you. In the back row, they just tested whether there's a target laser. Here, I'll let you explain, Pablo. They're looking at spectra right now, but there's a target laser that helps us see where where the science laser will hit when yep. it's fired, and yep. those are currently aligning, so that's great. Yeah, yeah so, you know, as a good expensive instrument, uh, you build redundancies, and <laughs> yeah, just in case we couldn't know where we're shooting, we have a red laser that is always on, if we want it to be, uh, so we can always know where we're shooting. Uh, but turns out that we can indeed now uh, see both our green, and which is the science laser, and the red, the pointing laser, and they are perfectly on the bull's eye <laughs> of our system, which is really remarkable too. Yeah. So, uh, another, another kudos to the engineering team that uh, built a fantastic tool here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, so yeah, so as soon as the as the navigators and pilots start uh, or finish their checking, we will proceed with our calibration uh, target tests that uh, I explained earlier. Uh, we're gonna there tweak uh, our uh, operational parameters 
to maximize the signal and get ready for for the real fun, which is uh, shooting at the rocks that you can see around us there. So oh, okay, we're ready to go here. Okay, so uh, so pilots just inform us that they're ready to go. So we're gonna now, um, uh, guys, we're gonna get the call targets from the basket uh, on the side, the one with the handle, uh, and drop it somewhere flat uh, at your discretion. Okay. So there's a sample salvo here. We can go to that, and then that will give us the box. So you see that And in this out instance, like I'll get that. you to go into the Herc page there. And, uh, so sad. And, uh, yeah, yep. Sarah, there should be a bubble cam setting for the, for the arm. It's two or three, I think. Yep. And, and then there's a camera. You can get me the other, the other starboard camera up. Uh, so it would be on the Herc page. Yep. Mm, cameras. So you turn the port rail. You can only have one. So how does it work? Yeah, turn the one off and then turn the new one on. There you go. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, box out a little bit, but not, not all the way, just enough for me to kind of get that tool. So you can try bumping it once or twice. That's a sample tray out. Yep. Another little bit. Mm, another little bit. I'll probably do it. Okay, box in all the way. Oh, pan and tilt is, needs to be adjusted. Okay, I'm just going to shift ahead. It's uh, anywhere in the soft sediment or? Uh, yeah, yeah, soft sediment will be good, yeah. Okay. With the top face up as you are looking at it, yeah. Okay. Okay. 
three meters is the closest that you can be. Okay. Okay, and it's out of focus below that, or? Okay, okay. And bring Argus down five meters. There goes backup plate. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. If yeah. the window does? Yeah, I'll stop there. Yeah. Wait, the camera. So you're saying yeah. don't go low. Yeah. Hey, uh, pilot. Uh, one yep. Yeah, so uh, you may, may want to um, get out of the rocks. Uh, you're getting too close. The for camera. comfort to the to the to the back, um, the back of the R of the ROV is almost touching the rock, and if he hits our camera, uh, <laughs> uh, then we're we're gonna be in trouble. So okay, if you, yeah, no, no, I was just gonna spin around and get in the soft stuff and uh, yeah. pick yeah. that up. Yeah, that sounds great. Look up with the Argus camera there a little bit. Can we bring the ship back? Uh, 10 meters astern, yeah. I would move, only I've dropped the other plate. So. Maybe even 20. To find a good spot to position. Right. Yeah. yeah. And also for them to look after w rocky situations like that. So yeah. hopefully we can patch that in easily. Yep. Oh. Do you need it to fire though? Just for viewing. Yeah. Ideally, Dwight can figure it out. Yeah, we'll see when he comes back up. Right now we're waiting on the ship move.
Is there any like fear of even in sediment it getting scratched or no? Okay, so it's just don't hit it with a rock. So we can move off actually. If I pick up the one that we've dropped, we can move off to the, I think that's the north, if you like. It looks flatter and softer. Uh, would you, Paulo, like to, to move off to the side into the sedimented area, pick up that other plate and, and move over a bit further uh, away? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Mike, uh, yeah, if, if you want to move farther away uh, into the sediment, uh, that's... Yeah, it's uh, safer. Uh, yeah, up, I just, yeah. uh, I yeah. got to get this one I dropped, unfortunately. Yeah. And if you need to do another move, can you get him so that like Argus is here? If 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 he's uh, how much is left of that move? Uh, four yeah, bring bring another ten or twenty down there. Yeah, uh, southwest, I guess. Try and get Argus here. Okay. Not moving laterally at all. Very weak. Drop the camera down to keep parking the frame there. Hello again, everyone. 
We are currently on our dive below the ocean surface. We are in the Pacific Marine National Monument, and right now we are looking down at the bottom of the ocean at our ROV Hercules. Hercules is currently doing some testing and trying our best to pick up something we have lost. And while we are out here, we want to talk a bit about our ROV. So Hercules, for example. We have some questions in the chat about Hercules, and one of them is, how many cameras does the ROV have? So, Hercules has about five cameras. One high definition video channel of fiber optic, so it's four standard definition video channels on co-ops. And these uh, are generally- Pablo, it's okay if I just lay this here and grab the other one, is it? And yes. Pick it back up again? Yes. Yep, and these cameras help us examine things up close and also in high definition, so we can beam them back to you guys ashore. And so, Hercules is not just named for any old superhero, it's actually an ancient Greek uh, mytholo mythological figure. So, in Greco-Roman mythology, Hercules is a god famous for his incredible strength, stamina, and far-reaching adventures. And since we launched in 2003, remote off, uh, sorry, we did not launch in 2003, but since it was launched in 2003, remotely operated vehicle Hercules has similarly explored the farthest reaches of our planet, unknown ocean environments with endurance and te tenacity befitting a hero. With Hercules, OETS surveyed ancient shipwrecks, discovered hydrothermal vents, and helped to identify marine species to news to science. And with our ROV Hercules, it is at the center of the Nautilus exploration program working in tandem with the ROV Argus to, and as our ROV Atlanta, which is currently observing Hercules at the bottom of the ocean now. And we do all sorts of work with these ROVs to explore geology, biology, archaeology, and chemistry of the oceans. And so Hercules is equipped with other instruments aside from cameras. Hercules includes a manipulator arm to help pick up. As we can currently see in our video feed, we can see Hercules picking up a little sample and this is an instrument that helps us calibrate the sensors on the ROV. And one of the sensors that we have on our ROV is what's called a Raman spectrometer. This is a new instrument that has been set up on our ROV, which comes from the SETI Institute. And we have some people on board who are in charge of this instrument. And they come all the way, all around the world to help us on our expedition here. What they're doing is testing out a new instrument to explore other planets and other bodies throughout the solar system and space. So we often use the oceans as a test bed for new technologies to help us explore the entire world and the entire universe. So Let's this goes a beyond the ocean. Yeah, and Yeah, Daniel, so, so now the pilots are moving the, the calibration target uh, to a safe place uh, where we can drop it, make it flat, and uh, then hover uh, on top of it with our laser to shoot at these uh, four uh, circular uh, uh, features that you see there in the middle of the, of the plate. Uh, those are uh, four materials that we handpicked uh, uh, in the lab uh, because they provide uh, emission peaks, uh, Raman peaks, uh, across the whole spectrum. So we can calibrate uh, the wavelength, uh, meaning that we can check if there's anything that is misaligned, uh, although it doesn't seem like it is, but uh, better to verify. And we can also check that uh, our camera is getting the amount of light that we expected to get uh, at this depth. So it's going to be a little exercise of uh, turning the knobs, if you want, of uh, how much laser energy do we put in the sample, uh, for how long better. do we open the camera, and verify again that uh, the instrument is working as expected. Uh, this is, in fact, uh, every day or every other day on Mars, uh, we do the same with the instruments. We shoot at blanks and car targets to verify the health of the instrument. So uh, this is uh, how it's done. So as you see, uh, yeah. the pilots are finding the, the right spot and then we'll hover on top of it to, to analyze that. Thank you for your answer, Pablo. Yeah, that's right, exactly. I have no over here, yeah, yeah. Move, move, shift. Okay, this is a better spot. Sorry about that.
So just like so, I assume? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice drop. Perfect. All right, so now, uh, Mike, if we can hover at three meters, uh, on top of it, as much as you can, I know you don't have cameras, but uh, try, try, try and imagine that our laser is going to be shooting down from the back to that. Sure thing. Three meters, please. Three <laughs> meter altitude. Yeah, or target or plate, whatever. Uh, and positioning vehicle to start tests. So f for those of you watching from home uh, or the office or whatever you are, uh, you're going to see a little dance here <laughs> as we're trying to position the ROV exactly on top of the targets uh, without having a camera <laughs> that is looking straight down, uh, except in our camera. And so um, uh, one thing that we discovered as we were going down is that it would be very nice to, to give the pilots uh, a view from our perspective, from our instrument, which has a camera. And I think we may be able to accomplish that in this dive uh, or in next dives, but um, I think uh, stay patient as we try to, to, to lock in the position of the ROV exactly under, uh, so that our laser falls into the targets. So uh, it should, yeah. should be fun. Michael, we're working on that right now, getting that view to you, to a, to a movie theater near you. To a movie. <laughs> <laughs> There's no movie theater near me where I live. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Certainly feels like a movie out here. Uh, oh, okay, first Step. animal. Yeah. Oh, wow. All right, bye. That was nice <laughs> to see you briefly. We have a Some kind of eel-like fish. Can't tell unless uh -oh. I see its head. Hey, Leela, it's Dwight in the lounge. I mean, sorry, in the data lab. Can you call me? All right, so one of the questions we have in the chat is asking about our live feed data. So we've been having some technical difficulties on this, but we are looking to get the behind the scenes data up to you guys soon. So we're currently troubleshooting, but once we get that done, we will have it right on our website on our homepage. Okay, uh, Amber, can you hear me? Yes, I write, that's me. Um, so we have uh, Kevin's computer with the camera view from the, from the laser dive bot on PC2. If that could um, be patched somewhere where the pilots can see it, that would be awesome.
or I guess pilot's PC2. I don't know how, how you want to pull it up, but could also be on a screen. On mute, sorry. Um, the auto altitude is bouncing between 2.8 and 3.2. Um, if you, I can try and do better with the auto depth. You could just, so, note what, what uh, Michael just said on there, yep. Let's just see how that behaves. Sorry, Amber. What was that? Uh, I'll talk to just you. Hold on. Seems pretty good now. Takes a while to level out, though. Okay. Okay. I think the best we can do is, uh, you know, it seems to be pretty good now at three, but it it might go like two point nine, three point two. Yeah, th that's perfectly that's okay. That's better right? than the altitude, though, that I got out of this little experiment. I'm using auto depth for future reference. I, the altitude was hunting a bit more. Okay. So yeah, uh, two point nine to three point one, or plus, that's good for us. Okay. And then, um, so I'm just going to drive over it, and you're going to you're going to see it. Yep, yep. Uh, I think we want to be looking at our cameras and mm -hmm. also at the Argus. Sorry, at the at the Atalanta camera, and, yeah. and okay. let you know when to stop. And okay. maybe we can sort out real quick uh, with Amber how we can get you to be able to see the screen back here to target that more easily. Yeah, yeah I just want to put it where one of the gauges are. So if you tell me which one is preferable, since you have the gauges duplicated. In. Oh, uh, you could put it on the top one. Okay, that's yeah. what I was Thank looking you. for. Thank you. I'll get on that. Thanks, Amber. Wow, so in our feed earlier, we saw some different fishes floating by. In one of our earlier uh, examinations, one so of our scientists Sarah, was able to Sarah, you can move your heading to uh, align with Herc a little bit better to, to get the, the in the center of the frame. Like, so one of our scientists has so you go like ten guess. degrees, or twenty degrees. To hit, hit it at yeah. There you go. Just hit it a couple of clicks at a time. Don't load up too many. Three or four is okay. So so far we may have an idea of what we might see in this video. Uh, so far, oh. one of our scientists has may have uh, spotted and identified what may be a cutthroat eel. And keep an eye yep. out for anything that looks one more. really yep. long, like awesome. an eel. Awesome. Hey, D D Daniel, sorry, I'm going to cut you off for a minute. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we have some video geniuses here yeah. that were able to patch in very quickly the camera from our instrument, the camera that is looking straight mm -hmm. down into the target area. And uh, I don't know if you've seen this home, but uh, okay. we know just have whatever a you can do to try and get it better in the that frame. That has a red one. laser uh, spot in the middle, so that is where we're shooting. 
So now the pilots are going to uh, use that uh, to guide uh, the motion of the ROV to land or lock the position right on top of the calibration target so that we can start doing our, our uh, calibration exercise there. So I think it's going to speed up things quite a bit. Yeah, that'll be hugely helpful. So as with any new technology development and mm -hmm. operations, uh, you always realize, oh, yeah. we could, couldn't have thought about this earlier, right? So, uh, so I think I this think is one of the things that you just discover find this uh, just as you go. Just, here, just so go back and forth with the auto heading. Is yeah. Now so we're seeing how, here it is. how they can really, really uh, get us so close and so stable on top of the, of the rock. So Next gonna, challenge will be aligning. <laughs> yeah. So, so Mike, uh, mm -hmm. uh, here, so uh, try to be on one of the white round targets. Um, okay. That's the first try thing to try. Yep. Okay. So describe yeah, which one they're trying to hit right now. It's a little hard when the video jumps, huh? One of the white circles, squares. Oh, sorry. You can make that better. Is the, are we looking right now, is the yellow NASA, is that facing the right way? Like if I said bottom left, would that make sense right now to you if we were going yeah. up? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can also mention they switched to auto depth, so now we're only bouncing between like 2.9 and 3.2. Something like that. Could we try to uh, move the ship like, just, I don't know. Five meters north, try and get Argus a little closer there. Might take um, some of this it's action It's only about out. like 2.9, 3.2, yeah. So I have a quick question from the science team. Do you know which seamount we are on? We are currently on an unnamed seamount northeast of Kingman Reef. That is our uh, name for this seamount. So, not 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 named currently. So, oftentimes when we're exploring the ocean, we're often seeing spots that we have never explored before. Many of them don't have names. So, when you're along for on the ride here, you're actually exploring new territory, just like we are. This is as still as it gets. I'm trying to move Argus up a little bit, but we're already pretty close just to try and like minimize the tether action. Um, I honestly don't know how much better it will get. Yeah. But Mike, uh, you know, it, 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 yeah, tr try that trick. Um, and you know, in case we cannot get anything better, we can default back to the other target plate, the one that was sticking out earlier, because it has larger targets. Uh, right, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, no idea.
moving the the vehicle, giving more slack with the tether. I think, yeah. Are you trying yeah. to like? It, it needs to stay for for a couple seconds, or yeah. yeah. It's hard even just with the motion of just water. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we can wait for the end of the ship move, but in, in my opinion, I don't think it's going to get much better than this. No. Okay. Well, well d uh, let's do one thing, Mike. Uh, we're gonna try and get one measurement as you're hovering around in the next time you go over the target, and hopefully we got some of it. So, sure. so we're, we're we're shooting now, and yeah. So t t try stay there for a, for a few more seconds uh, sure, as the wait of you, and yeah. you can see the laser now there. Mm. Uh. Yeah, and then the wire has got to catch up too. But I, it'll Im it might improve it, but it still, I don't think it's gonna. Yeah, hey, well, you got a good pass there. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay, we're done shooting and uh, stay there anyway and until we see the results. And sure. Yeah. No. No, no, we're trying again. It wasn't that good earlier. I think we may actually be down in like half an hour. We're going moving pretty fast. Yeah. Are you doing them every hundred meters now? Every hundred meters now? Ish, yeah. Yeah. No, it's nice to have continuous. No, yeah, partially. I think depth. Found it, is, I yeah, had makes a sense. Dive. You're talking about the camera controller? Easier to compare between dives and. Uh. Yeah, I got that bit. But controlling this is uh, not. Yeah, yeah, it was. Now it's a little. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're we're verifying now that uh, that the organic load is decreasing uh, relative to the amount of water, uh, which is a metric of uh, of how uh, how there is fewer and fewer uh, particles of organic uh, matter uh, as we go down. If you're looking at the screen, uh, you can see that you barely yeah. see any white but spots in the in the, the front the camera of like the ROV. Uh, and I think that's like exactly what we're seeing here. You see some of them floating right now. Uh, but if you remember what it was 20 minutes ago, uh, a cloud of white spots, um, that's what we're measuring. Uh, so now we're measuring fewer yeah. of those yeah, uh, nice to see uh, because the they're fewer. Yeah. So it's quite this is all wide. consistent with how, uh, so how things should work. Yeah. This is the organics here in red? No. The, so the, yeah, is this little hump here on the oh on this the left. is the yeah. water yeah this is water the top one is water as well on the left this shoulder here, yeah that is organic that's and organic. the little okay. tiny one here is sulfate okay yep. okay got it yeah 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 so you're seeing that these two are now the deeper we go this goes down and this will become a, a nice peak with probably nothing in the organic side right? and what are we looking at up here so here we're looking at um at uh, fluorescence, so this is mostly Raman uh, yeah. signals, and this is fluorescence uh, signal. Uh, this is another metric for the glow of the organic particles, as okay. we see here. So it's uh, uh, in a, in a way it's a symmetrical 
picture of this, mm -hmm. but it's taken in with a, in a different way, so that it shows different features. But, um, Have you been noticing a change in the intensity of that peak as we've descended? Uh, I haven't been paying attention uh, <laughs> to that one, uh, but uh, but there should be there should be a difference, and, and okay. I think that's Got it. Um, uh, cool. Something to verify. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yes. I know it would be so nice to patch in. Um, how would it need to be connected? He's, you're, are you on the network through this computer, Pablo? Yeah. You're on the instrument network with that computer, with both of you. Okay, Kev Kevin's on the instrument network. I don't know if you have a way to pull. Which drive it is? Uh huh. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> and if you are joining us live again, welcome aboard the Exploration Vessel Nautilus. Today we are going on our very first expedition this season. This is NA-149. And right now, our ROV, Hercules, is currently diving below the ocean. We are roughly 650 meters below the ocean. If it's okay if you go like dead slow. Yeah, you do like 0.2 or something like that's fine. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to take some questions from the live stream right now. So you're asking how many minutes will it be before you reach the bottom? We're looking so far at under an hour. So we should be seeing some really cool features coming up here within the hour. So stay tuned. And another question. Let's see. And we're also able yeah, to update our website. Back. We're also able to update our website to say that we are now currently taking questions. I apologize for the delay in that, but you can continue adding your questions in the chat and we'll be getting to it soon on that. I did, yeah. I should have. Man. 
All right, all good. Appreciate it. It seems like it's locked up. It does a little thing. See? Okay, so we had a question in a chat that asked, um, a question for scientists. Can you give an estimate of how many people have worked on a Raman spectrometer? Uh, on this particular one, uh, 50. Uh, and it's been a labor of love <laughs> between uh, <laughs> scientists, geologists, biologists, who were telling the engineers, uh, electronic, mechanical, optical, uh, and software, what to build. Uh, so we started with a science question, uh, what do we need to measure and how? And then uh, we split the tasks between different engineers uh, across the country. Um, and in fact, we almost critical to the mission was the student involvement. So we have had a cohort of students that have rotated uh, among the, the labs uh, where all the work was being done. In fact, most of them were from uh, minority serving institutions. Uh, so we're very excited to, to bring that uh, fresh uh, view and ideas into the project. So all in all, I think about 50 people, give or take, across 10 institutions uh, in the US and uh, the UK and Belgium as of lately. Uh, so it's been a pretty, pretty large project uh, to get here. Yeah. That's great. Yep, it goes to show that when it comes to working in the oceans and working on big engineering projects, we need people from all around the world and talents from all sorts of places. So if you're ever interested yourself in a career in engineering and oceanography, feel free to you know study STEM in school. And also if you feel want to engage in more of Nautilus, you can also check our website. We have job openings and internships that are available, including science and engineering, as well as science communication. So feel free to check that out. We would love to have you aboard. Okay, in the chat, we're looking at some more questions. So, what are the white spots and little moving glows? Are they marine life? That is actually something called marine snow. And this is something that falls out of the water column and all the time all around the oceans. This includes some pretty interesting but gross things, including uh, whale feces, uh, the pet dander, well not pet dander, uh, we include fish scales, all sorts of dead organic matter, and this is actually something that's crucial to the environment in the ocean. It's a vital food source for microorganisms. Those microorganisms establish the bottom of the food pyramid, or food chain, I should say. And this is something that will support many oceans throughout the world. Oftentimes, we can track the cycling of nutrients throughout the oceans by looking at marine snow. So as you see our ROV Hercules drift on down, you'll see the snow drift on by as well. And in fact, Daniel, uh, to add to that, uh, marine snow is a great way to capture uh, and to sink and sequester carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Uh, uh, we know that when this marine snow uh, lays down in the bottom of the sea, uh, it stays there uh, for hundreds, if not thousands of years, uh, undisturbed in the, in the bottom. So it's one of the ways that we can uh, monitor and measure uh, the drawdown of atmospheric CO2 from the atmosphere and its sequestration in the in the seabed. So uh, something to really, really uh, explore and, and study more intensively now that we have the tools. Okay, great, thank you, fantastic. 
Okay, so we see some people in the chat who are from the East Coast. Welcome. And in fact, I'm from the East Coast myself. And so we have another question here. How deep will this dive go? So if anybody is available, what, how do you think, uh, how deep are we expecting to go today? Today we're gonna, about, gonna go down to about 1,200 meters. Um, um, so yeah, yeah, that's that's the depth. Yeah. All right. And do you know how long that will take us from this point? Uh, I think we're probably about 20, 30 minutes uh, from we're touching down. Yep. 27. Oh, 15 more minutes. Yeah, 15 more minutes. 27 right meters a minute right now. Yeah. We're descending at <coughs> 27 meters per minute. So you can do the math or I do it for you. Uh, Time we'll to bottom, yeah. yeah, we'll be there in 14 minutes and yes, take 18 oh, seconds. For, your, for that? Yeah, take it from Give that's or take. the best source. You got. <laughs> Give or take. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Maybe go get a. <laughs> it's Friday night somewhere. So <laughs> grab, grab, grab a drink, get a beer or, or water and, and tune in in 15 minutes. And we'll be. So, so what we will do as soon as we touch down is we're going to do a little survey with cameras just to see what we, where we are and document the place. Uh, I believe this is an unexplored, um, uh, very old, ancient volcano that never got quite to emerge uh, above this, the, the level of the, of the ocean. Uh, so, but we've never been down there. So we're going to take a little bit of time to, to explore around uh, with cameras. And then we're going to uh, uh, use uh, a calibration target um, uh, to verify the performance of the instrument just not to measure water. Uh, now we have checked the box, uh, yeah. as if you have heard me in the last hour or so. Uh, we can measure water, organics, and sulfate in water. Um, now we're going to see if we can measure minerals. So 